Welcome to the course Introduction to Urban Planning. In the previous lectures, we reviewed the emplotment and covered Mesopotamian, Egyptian, Indus Valley, Vedic, Greek and Roman civilization. Today, we are going to discuss about the industrial revolution and its effect on growth of town planning from 17th to 20th century. We see that this particular during this period of industrial revolution, not only the transformation was happening, but it was happening at a very rapid scale and it was happening at a very different scale altogether. So, accordingly today, our coverage would include, we will look at what in, uh, industrial revolution was, what was its geographical spread, the historical overview of it and what kind of phase wise technology interventions and innovations took place, what were the different innovations and what were its impact, how industries were growing, what was happening with the city development and housing needs, what kind of issues and socio-economic lifestyle was evolving in this period. We will also see utopianism and planning which came up eventually following this period. We also see city beautification movement which came up. So, we are going to cover all these aspects in today's session. After completion of the session, you should be able to critically contextualize industrial revolution, its geographical spread, the technology and innovation and you should be able to contemplate its impact on urban planning. Likewise, you should be able to review the spatial pattern how the distribution was about the cities and how the land were land uses were changing, urban transition you should be able to see and the changes in the socio-economic structure that was happening at that time. You should be able to identify the key people and elements of utopianism and planning and city beautification movement. Let us begin with understanding the basic concept of industrial revolution. What was industrial revolution? It was a period of major industrialization and innovation that took place during the 1700 and late 1900. It was the process by which an economy was transformed from a primarily agriculture to one one based on the manufacturing of goods. So, individual manual labors were often replaced by the mechanized mass production. Further, people stopped making things at home and started making things in factories. So, this was the time when there was a major change in the field like agriculture, manufacturing, mining, transportation and technology. Distinctively, economy shifted from farming to manufacturing industry. For example, Lodz Agriculture Town in Poland, we see, which is popularly known for this transition. This little agriculture town was completely transformed into a biggest textile center of Europe. So, let us now look into how industrial revolution swept across different countries. The industrial revolution began in Britain. The evolution started in Europe and United States in the period from 1760 to 1840. By the mid 18th century, Britain was the world's leading commercial nation controlling a global trading empire. The effects of industrial revolution led to the development of trade as well as led to rise of the businesses. Eventually, industrial revolution spread across the world. Therefore, the industrial revolution also led to an unprecedented rise in the rate of population growth in the urban areas. The image on the left hand side where you can see the map of Britain uh, where the entire revolution started and on the right hand side you can see the world map showing the countries following the industrial revolution highlighted in the pink. In the later period, industrial revolution came to Asian sit countries. So, we see that the industrial revolution began very slowly where the household activity was done through machines and later the machines were brought in for mass production which evolved the factories and the evolution started to begin as a revolution. 
when factories got widened with larger machineries. The Industrial Revolution brought in new interventions according to the time they lived and evolved. The machines transformed to larger machineries. Some of the key examples include telegraph, cotton gin, steam engine and the telephone. These new inventions and technology improvement during the revolution brought in evolutionary changes through time. For example, the invention of steam engine which was used to improve the transportation drastically by time and scale. Now goods and people could travel longer distance in considerably very short time. This enhanced the trade and connecting routes between industries improved, larger and quick movement of raw material ultimately increased the industry's production and trade, thus it all turned in increasing the economy. Let us now look into the chronology of industrial revolution, which includes major inventions and their impact. We see that in 1652, the public water supply system by gravity uh, was invented in Boston, which boomed up the industries. In 1765, steam engine was invented, which imp improvised the connectivity and trade, also brought in major change in the economic growth. In 1776, the capitalism theory increased the labor and the owners of the industry. In 1825, we see the steam railroad mass transit system, this improvised the transit within the city creating a decentralized society. In 1850 and 1876, the communication system like the telephone and telegram also developed which routes the faster growth in the industrialization as the communication became easier. We further see that in 1885, the electrical railways an internal combustion engine were invented which made the transit and trade between states easier uh, uh, while crowding the streets. In 1897, the underground railway was also invented. In this time, we see that rivers played a major role in the transit of finished product from the factories through the coast. The Severn, Thames and Trent were the most navigable rivers of England. The main international seaport of England were London, Bristol and Liverpool. The British began to build canals in the late 18th century. In 1720, roads gained importance for the Industrial Revolution. After the road lines were built, the turnpikes were established to charge a toll for maintenance of roads. The railway line reduced the role of canal and now any area with railway line was available for goods transport. Robert Fulton uh, made the first steam powered engine to power steamboat to fasten the travel through water. So this further improved uh, another mode of transportation. Later in the 16th and 17th century, the Wedgwood Potter in London became famous manufacturer. However, Potter found it very difficult to shift the raw material from one place to the another which caused challenges to convert raw material to finished products and also send them to the market. To make it easier, roads were constructed, parliament approved to build roads by businessmen so that the transportation is increased which in turn increased the trade. So we see that how for the purpose of trade, the parliament is also making provision for construction of uh, wide construction of road. Then the Staffordshire road was constructed. This en route the connection between the factory and market and then to national road which further expanded to connect the cities. Canals, motorways were created by private entrepreneurs to transport their goods at cheap rates. Canals connected the coast and network navigation rivers for trade and transportation. The construction of railway lines and roadways reduced the wait time for goods that were transported within the city and the state. So further we are saving time and we can work faster. 
It saved several hours. For example, the time taken to travel from London to Edinburgh was 43 hours. But after the establishment of the railway line, the time reduced to 12.5 hours. Sim uh, similarly to the other cities, the time was reduced to multiple folds. As uh, demand for the products increased, like there were increased demand for cloth, Newer discoveries were made by inventors with multiple technological improvement in the machines to ease the production of cloth. To house these new machines, manufacturers built the first factory. Slowly, these production became larger in scale which ultimately helped in economic growth of the country in various sectors like agriculture, shipping, cotton, wool and so on. The graph represents the productivity estimated growth in UK from 1780 to 1860. As the growth started expanding, people started to settle in and around the workplace, which led people to leave the places they lived and settle at the place they work. So here we can start seeing the transition in the settlement pattern. Uh, increase in migration, people were coming from the, uh, their rural area to the uh, places where the industries were set up and increase in urbanization because more and more people were coming together and then the changing pattern of land use. Now you can see industries also taking place and then uh, settlements living around that and our life was surrounded close to the industry. So we see that kind of pattern change here. Then we also see rising population and increase in demand for workers which led people to move from villages to cities to work in factories because of which small towns near natural resources and cities near factories grew instantly. So we also see that how uh, different kinds of cities are growing. You can see cities at growing near natural resources as well as you can see cities growing where the factories are growing. Further, we see how the demography of the place was changing. We were seeing people shifting from agriculture to non-agriculture based activities, which you may recollect that we saw in our first lecture about how we define the urban areas in different countries with respect to economy and the size of population. Further, we see geographical spread of cities now aligned with natural resources and factories and the distance between the cities reducing by rail, road, canal, river and sea. So we see how, how the entire landscape is transforming in this particular era. Let us now discuss the conditions of the family dwellings. So these kind of understanding brought a lot of change and it also implied of lot of health interventions also which we took place. Now let us discuss the condition of family dwellings. This particularly highlighted the living condition at point in time and also brought in a lot of change where how the planning was handled, how the cities were handled at, at that time. These migrants were forced to live in cheaply built houses for accommodation as these houses were situated near the workplace. The houses were multiple stories which lack proper water facility, no toilets, the sewers were drained through the streets, trash thrown out into street as there was improper waste management system. Each units were covered like five plus people living in one room which was ultimately a breeding ground for diseases. Also the pollution from factory smoke was fogged in the living's atmosphere of the people. They were built in courts. The major principle that was followed was three walls uh, were shared with other houses reducing material usage. The units were very compact and cramped. The streets were very narrow that would not allow light or sufficient air to enter through the house. In the image we can see plan of uh, these houses. Uh, which were there at that time, you can see how the houses of poor masses were placed back to back and how the streets were narrow and did not allow the light to penetrate through. So you can visualize how unhealthy was the environment at po that point in time. Overall, we see how industrial revolution evolved. With the established trade routes, competition increased for trade that led to increased pressure on the production 
this leading to increased working hours for laborers and the producers, thus they settle near to their workplace which lacked the basic facility to. This lodging of workers in overcrowded houses led to the formation of slums. Lack of sanitation gave way to unhealthy living conditions. Industries led to class based stratification like we can see middle class people, uh, we can uh, see uh, working class people, we can see industrial people. Laborers lived in crowded areas and also had lack of infrastructure which led to poor living condition. Industrialization brought in change in the cities, living and working condition, also in the class tensions. Here because of industrialization, the cities expanded in size, holding up factories in large scale, whereas the living conditions were cramped, crowded leading to sickness with no safety. Industrialization also increased the working hours of laborers with less pay under dangerous circumstances. These increased the tension in the classes where there were middle class people who were economically growing and there were large gap between the poor and the rich, meaning the rich were getting richer and the poor were becoming poorer and un unhealthy. Here you see in this diagram that how the way of life was changing in this period. You can see cities, how they are changing in size and how they are factory centric. You can see the living condition, there were no safety and there was sickness and then the people were getting poor. Then the working conditions, you can see there were long hours and little pay and then the dangerous condition and you also see there were class tensions with increasing um, difference in the rich and the poor and then there was also the rise of the middle class. The planning of the city was developed where classes were linked to the residential pattern. The elites were situated at the innermost concentric part while the middle class was situated at the next level of the circle and the outcasts, the ethnic minorities were situated in the fringe part of the city. Example of how the planning of the city was evolved as the city center was held up with shops and services with next level ring was accommodated with factories and rundown houses and the suburbs were situated with parks and houses. We see that industrial revolution reflects to a profound influence of new developing science and technologies. The buildings and squares of the neoclassic period, the monumental vistas, royal gardens and so on were all for the upper classes, the wealthy merchants and the kings, but the conditions of the poor mass remained same. But the oppression brought serious social and socio-economic unrest making grounds for revolution. Looking at the physio graphic factors, newly productive industries opened in areas that were suitable for agriculture. Since people started moving and settling in different places near to their workplace, initiated the growth in different patterns of settlements, thus regional planning also started. We also see there was change in power and politics as the industries boomed up, the industrial entrepreneurs emerged as powerful bodies. The British power started to decline which also include the power of nobles and landlord as administration as administration became difficult, hence colonization started. Further we look at the socio-cultural characteristic, middle class came up they were growing, also class based on the residential pattern evolved, thus housing and infrastructure facilities started to improve. We can also relate it with the technological intervention which were happening at this time. The land tenure was based on lease system, capitalism brought in the class differentiation where few of the industrialists were having the monopoly. The new industrial economy brought poor with poverty that in turn raised the slums for them to reside at. The number of employees in proportion to the owners increased very rapidly. Trade unions among industrial workers started to take care of the traders in contrast to the medieval guild of the proprietors. 
Further we see that a modern planning approach was also evolving. The industrial revolution brought the necessity to provide public utilities as inseparable part of settlement to increase the livability. We will also look in our um, other urban issue section when we will study about health, how this particular period has an important role to play there. Here the living condition was increased by providing ventilation to the housing units, increasing water facilities, providing safe disposal of liquid and solid waste, fire safety, proper drain lands were equipped for redevelopment and development within settlements or town limits. We look at the initial approach. The initial approach started by an industrialist in England called Robert Owen during 1846 to 1912. He proposed a plan for the community to make the living healthy for industrial workers. He proposed a plan which occupies 50 to 100 acres for a population of 1200 which was supposed to be self-sustained with open spaces around. This was evolved from the concept of cooperative community combining industry and agriculture. A model of British urban development which combines the sector theory with the concentric zone model. Four basic zones are middle class, lower middle class, working class and lower working class to which the CBD, the transitional zone, a zone of smaller house and the outermost zone were added. It is an imagined place or a state of things in which everything is perfect as utopia. New urbanism, a return to the utopia of traditional neighborhoods and cities. The objective of utopianism were a distinct sense of place responding to the local context, continuity of frontages, defined public and private spaces, quality of public realm, safety, attractiveness, living and functional public space, an accessible space, well connected space, pedestrian friendly space with a readily understandable, easily navigable environment which was flexible and adaptable, public and private environment, all these things were targeted for. A varied environment offering a range of experience was the utopian design objectives. Robert Owen and J. S. Buckingham tried to design an utopian design which had 1000 houses, 20 feet wide, arcade for workshops, 560 houses, 28 feet wide retail shops, 296 houses, 38 feet wide winter promenade arcade with 120 houses, 54 feet public building, churches, 24 mansions, 80 feet central square. In 1849, he published a treaty in which he has also mentioned his plan for a model town with 10,000 inhabitants. Now we will look at the City Beautiful Movement. City Beautiful Movement flourished between 1890 and 1920. The idea of organized comprehensive planning in United States started from City Beautiful Movement which claimed that design could not be separated from the social issues and should encourage civic pride and engagement. Its influence was most prominent in cities such as Cleveland, Chicago, Washington DC. The City Beautiful movement emerged at a time in US history when the country's urban population first began to outnumber its rural population. Most city dwellers perceived that cities were ugly, congested, dirty and unsafe. As cities grew, an increasing rapid condition enhanced by an influx of immigrants. At the end of the 19th century, public space was being taken away from the increased congestion. City dwellers needed open outdoor areas for recreation. In addition, the chaotic approach to sanitation, pollution and traffic found in big American cities affected rich and poor alike, which is how the City Beautiful movement gained both financial and social support. Great effort was devoted to plan for redevelopment of Mississippi. The mansard roof tells us that Burnham was using Paris as his model. 
He also wanted all the bridges over the river rebuilt to be more attractive. His idea of riverfront park has been implemented in recent years as well. For example, we can see Daniel Burnham plan of Chicago. We further see that city beautiful movement. In the city beautiful movement, we also look at the world fair ground in Chicago held in 1892, uh, which resulted in the development of uh, new attitudes toward industrial cities. This fair was visited by more people than any event in the history of the world. The Chicago based railroads brought people from all across the country to visit the ground with its pavilion and exciting midway entertainment district. It was an opportunity to show off all sorts of new designs and styles. The fair committee gave the task of designing the fair to Daniel Burnham, a Chicago architect who was devoted to the city beautiful movement and the box art style. It was essentially a backward looking designer who used classical motives and French second empire style. It is interesting to note that the fair committee did not select Louis Sullivan or one of the other modern architects working in the city at the same time. The city beautiful movement argued that cities did not have to be ugly to make money like we have been seeing in the industrial revolution time. The fairground was filled with huge white fanciful buildings, statues and public spaces that were fundamentally different from the gritty industrial cities of the time. There the visitors were mesmerized. We further see that the leaders of Minneapolis were proponents of the city beautiful movement and hired Burnham's firm to create a plan for the city which was realized in 1970. This is the front ice piece Burnham viewed Minneapolis as if it were a great metropolis. Although he did not make detailed plan for the entire area until he clearly understood the connections among the various parts. He designed a metro area with Minneapolis as the core. We believed a city needed a grand entrance. For him that was the railroad depot. Therefore, he proposed that the two new depots be built in the gateway district of the city which would provide a grand backdrop to the busy and the attractive public space. We further see that this grand boulevard was justified as uh, a solution to traffic problem encountered by suburban commuters and a way to provide housing for higher income people in the city. The boulevard would be a way to clear low quality housing in the early urban renewal program. Uh, in addition, it would provide a, a fire break in the event of a conflagration such as ones that devastated Chicago and San Francisco. Here we can see uh, the water gate where the boulevard terminated on the shore of the lake Harriet. It is the approximate location of the uh, Rose Garden. Great effort was devoted to plan for the redevelopment of the Mississippi. The mansard roof tells us that the Burnham was using Paris as his model. He also wanted all the bridges over the rivers rebuilt to be more attractive. His idea of a riverfront park has been implemented in recent years as well. We see that city beautiful movement included four main elements, municipal art, civic improvement, outdoor art and classical design. Civic improvement brought to temper the effect of industrialization in the domestic 
home and neighborhood environment. This was often led by women who promoted clean up and beautification of communities, improvement in the appearance of the front yards, promotion of decorative home gardens. So, we see that how now even the places where people live was also getting beautified in this period. The other component which we see is the outdoor art. We also find outdoor art which was led by American Park and Outdoor Art Association, a national park system that was uh, park particularly made in the city for the enjoyment of the working people. Uh, it was planned urban development for a better housing, where civic art, sanitation and traffic and safety. We also see classical design led by architects of the time. This design was to integrate European classicism and grand design in American city, including traditional Gregorian Roman design themes into city plans. For example, Daniel Burham's plan of Chicago. So, you see now how people started looking at cities and then also incorporated the elements of history in their uh, built environment. Further, we also see that Britain's rise for 200 years was financed by its depredation in India. In fact, Britain's industrial revolution was actually premised upon the deindustrialization of India. The handloom weavers, for example, framed across the world whose products were exported around the world, Britain came right in. There were actually these weavers making fine muslin as light as woven weave. It was said and Britain came right in, smashed their thumbs, broke their looms, imposed tariffs and duties on their cloth and product and started of course taking their raw material from India and shipping back manufactured cloth flooding the world's market with what became the product of dark and satanic mills of the Victoria in England. So, summarizing what we saw today, uh, we uh, first saw that how the industrial revolution uh, took place, how was the geographical uh, spread in this period, how the technology and innovation was bringing in transformation and transformation at a very different scale and pace. And uh, we see how it was impacting how the uh, places were, uh, how the planning was happening. Likewise, you have also seen that how the spatial pattern was changing. You saw the urban transition and you also saw the socio-economic structure which was evolving in this particular period and also the social stress, uh, social tension which was evolving at the time. Further, you also saw key people and elements of utopianism and also you looked at the city beautification movement where all how we were looking at how our living spaces need to be beautiful as we had uh, experienced during our industrialization period that how things were getting ugly and dirtier. So, in today's lecture we saw that uh, how the industrial revolution, uh, how was its growth and how it impacted the planning framework. So, that was our coverage for today. These are the references which we have taken. Our coverage was limited with the scope to make you aware of the topic. There are enormous readings and movies available to explore. Few are suggested here. This is not an extensive list. You may feel free to suggest more from your experience. Please feel free to ask questions, let us know about your concerns you have, do share your opinion, experiences and suggestions. Looking forward to interacting and co-learning with you while exploring cities and urban planning. Looking forward to interacting and co-learning with you while exploring cities and urban planning. Thank you.